If you remind me later, I might let you go. On the quiz! This was the one I was talking about. I'm hoping Branson, because he was one of them that said, oh, can we retake this other one? And I said, well, no, but now we've got one that's sort of the same. Same, same ideas, right? Yeah. Name and stuff. First thing, name a line. Name me a line in this picture. NT. What's a line thing? So if I just put NT, what do you what do you know? It's, not it. it's wrong. You gotta use the arrows. arrows, the line symbol. So name should be able to name that or use that. This is dusty. Name a ray in this picture. Um, uh, um, a, N, A, with a line with one dot. Seg, or, uh, ray, N, A, with one arrow going out that way. Do I get half credit if I don't put the line dot? Uh, no. Nope. Uh, haven't I been saying that the whole time? Make sure that you're not putting the symbol. It's marked wrong. So get on it from here on out. Name a segment. On the team. Say it again. Or A, T. A, T. Are there many different ones that you could add? Yeah, and make sure you use the segment symbol. Name a plane. What's the symbol for a plane? plane. It doesn't have a symbol, right? You got it right out the plane. Plane. B. I heard N O L. Would that work? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Plane. B. I heard. Would that work? Yes. Yeah. Remember, if it's just giving you that one letter up there in the corner. You can do that. You can do it that way. Name three collinear points. What's collinear mean? Same line. N-A-T. Now here's where you got to be careful. I'm not going to say that you got to write the word point every time. All right? But... I am going to say this. If you put NAT the way I just wrote it up here, I'm marking it wrong. All right? Because if you're listing three different points, what else should you have? Commas. Commas. Otherwise, if I look at this, I might think that you're trying to name a what? Plane. So put commas in there if you're not going to write the word point out so that I know you're listing three separate points. Notice again. All what kind of letters? Uh, capital okay. capital yeah. letters. Uh, the next one said find X. What's these markings tell us about these two segments? It's, it's and the, that's They're equal. equal. So tell me the equation I could set up. 2X two. Two two X plus 2 equals 3X minus 8. Is our equation always going to be set up that way? No. 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 Now what? Subtract 2x. Subtract 2x on both sides. <laughs> Branson, hmm. one more thing today, man, and you're not going to be in here. Um, add the 8 to the Add 8 to both sides. Those cancel out. You're left with just x on this side. 2 and 8 give you what? 10. <laughs> Didn't have to divide this time. X equals 10. What if they ask you to figure out the length of segment NA? How long is segment NA? You do, you put 10 in for X. So 2 times 10 plus 10 plus 22. Plus 22. 22. How long is segment AT? 22. How long if they ask you to find the length of segment NT? 44. Just add them up, right? When we take another quiz like this next time, those of you who said you didn't put your symbols and stuff, you'll remember it? Make sure we're going to take quizzes like this quite often. Make sure you know what you're doing. On the homework, Questions off a of page. I would highly suggest you ask me how to do a couple of these distance problems so you can see it. Questions off a of page, uh, what was it? One, or, uh, I keep thinking my other class. Page 31. Uh, I might help out Cameron right here because he didn't 
wasn't here for it, right? So all the problems that they do, you could be writing down and doing them right now in your book, right? Go ahead, Branson. Problem number 30? Is it a word problem or is it a... Uh, it's the baseball field one. Hmm. Read it to me, please. I don't I, I don't have a book playing up here anymore, so... The distance between each base on a... Oh, well, I had the picture off there. I'll just draw it. That's close enough. The distance between each baseball field base on a baseball field... Baseball infield is 9 feet. The third base and third ball. The third base is 20 feet. And the nearest foot... To the nearest foot, how far do the players go the ball? So, like, point P is. 30 feet above first place. Yeah. Anybody ever look at it? Mm -hmm. Ah, I see. Alright, so. That's not here, it's up here, right? Mm -hmm. That's 30 extra feet going up that way. Yeah. So third baseman throws it from here to there. If we're going to use the distance formula, they gave you a little picture there. What were the coordinates of the third base set up here? No, they didn't put it on the coordinate field, did they? Could we put it on the coordinates field if we wanted? What are you going to put here? Zero. zero, zero. Which position on the field? First. You going to put first here, third here, what? That's probably not, I probably wouldn't put either one of those, so I'd probably put what at zero, zero. Where do you start at? Um, so I might put home plate there. How far out this way am I going to go to get to first base? 90. So what's my coordinates going to be? 90. 90. 90. 90. 90. right? If I go this way, you don't play baseball, and you run backwards when you hit the ball, what's your coordinates? We're running to third base. Zero, zero, 090. Zero, now the pitcher threw the ball out here to some point right here that they said was 30 extra feet. What's the coordinates of that going to be? So it goes out 120. That's 30 extra feet from the 90 and still zero. So for the third baseman, not the pitcher. I said pitcher, I think. So they threw it from there to there. We're trying to find this length. What's the two ordered pairs that we need? 090, good. 120, zero. Notice, can you set up anything in our world on some coordinate system like that? Yeah. Yeah. Set it up and, and use the coordinate system to help you out. How about your calculators? I forgot to check them. You get lucky today. I don't feel like walking back around. How about your calculators? If you don't have one, I highly suggest that you use this time, this extra time this weekend to get one. Otherwise, I probably will be calling your house and saying, hey, I've been asking them all for three weeks now to get a calculator. No reason that they can't have one by this point, you would think, right? I heard a word, and I just don't know what it is. What is an inverse parabola? We'll talk, we'll talk about that later. Okay. So on this, we want our x's and our y's zero here. Is it an x or a y? X. 90 here. 120. Mark them that way so you don't make careless mistakes. What are our two x's? What's going to go in here? Zero and? Now, does it matter which order they go in? So what might be better here? 120 then zero. Ignore that. What are my two y's? So which one am I going to put in first? 90 probably and zero. Punch that into your calculator. Remember I said, I told you last time, just punch all of this into your calculator just the way it is, parentheses and all. 
Don't do the square root, just what's underneath it. See if you can get the correct answer. If not, then we need to go back and redo it until you get the correct answer so that you know how to punch it into your calculator every time. Ethan O said 150. Anybody else get that yet? Okay, you got that. Anybody not get it? Except for Branson, who apparently doesn't like his calculator because he's not touching it right now. Michael, you like sitting in the back of the room. Am I getting 150 or not? Yep. Yes, no, maybe? I didn't get 150, so I might have done something wrong. Right, Did so you get 22,000? Yep. Yeah, that's what I have to square yeah. root it in the 150. Oh, so they got something different. Square root. Yeah. Okay. Oh. 150 is already squared. Oh, he already took the square root. He didn't tell us that, did he? He was a oh, step yeah. ahead of us. So what's underneath the square root? 22,000. 22,500, everybody agree with that? Yes. Does that look better? <laughs> then you have to do what? Square root. Take the square root. I thought I was wrong. Yeah, you know, I, I did it like 300 times, like over, and I was like, how did he get that? So Ethan O there is just smarter than us, and he was already a step ahead. You take the square root, and it comes out to be 150. How far did the 150 feet? The third baseman throw the ball through the 150 feet. Later on this year, we're going to learn this. I'll just show you this right now. Just real quick. What kind of triangle is this? The right triangle, because that has to be a right angle there, right? So we have this. Somebody tell me how long is this side? 90 feet. How long is this side? 120. Later on in the year, when we talked a little about this last time, we had a right triangle that was a three at a side that was three, a side that was four. Anybody remember what that third side was? It was five. That's the only one that works out that way, in order that way. All right? How many times will three go into 90? 30 times, right? How many times will four go into 120? 30 times. Guess what you do with 5 to figure out the length of this side? Times them, and what do you come up with? 150. So we could have found that length that way instead of doing it using distance formula. Other questions? Branson, what did you that asked me that? Branson, what's the name? you that asked me that question? And you should be paying real close attention instead of getting sidetracked, please. Uh, number 47. 47. Mel is knitting a scarf with diagonal stripes. Before she began, she laid out the pattern on a coordinate grid uh, where each unit represented two inches on the grid. Uh, the first strike began at 2-0 and ended at 5-4. All the stripes are the same length. How many inches long is each stripe on the scarf? So, again, got our coordinate system. What they, what they tell us Mel said or started doing? Where was the first stripe starting at? 2-0, so 1, 2, 0. Something about like that, right? Where where to end that? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Do I really need the picture? Not really. All right, we're just trying to find the length of that stripe. All we really need are the two ordered pairs. But if it helps you to have the picture. So she's knitting this thing, and apparently, you know, the first stripe looks like that, the second stripe looks like that. 
third stripe looks like that, fourth stripe looks like that, and they're going out like that, whatever. We don't need the scarf really, but that's what it's going to look like, something like that. <coughs> Five, X or a Y? X, four. Y. We're going to use the distance formula. Again, when you're doing this stuff out, when we take a test over this stuff, coming up here real soon, right next week, we take a test over this stuff, right out the skeleton, every single time. Anytime you're trying to find the distance between two points on a coordinate system, that stays the same every single time. What goes in these two spots? What numbers? Uh, five, and two, five and two, two and five. Which order should I put them in? Probably five, two, like that. Makes it easier to do the subtraction. And what goes in these two spots? Four and zero. Four and zero, so four minus zero. Punch that into your calculator again. Ethan O, don't tell us the final answer this time. Tell us what you get once you have all that punched into your calculator. You guys get it already? Give everybody else a chance before we say it. Anyway. What'd you get when you punched all that into your calculator? 25. Anybody else get 25? Mm -hmm. Yes, no, maybe. You didn't? I didn't have the second square. <laughs> Try it again if you didn't get it, because I think that should be right. We know it is, because Michael said it is. That's not why we know it's right. Is that what yeah. we're going with? Yeah. And what's the square root of 25? That's one of those perfect square numbers. Five. Right. So how long is each stripe? Five inches. Five inches. Again, did you really need the picture? No. Not really, but if it helps you to see the picture, draw it. Next question. Mm -hmm. Eight. Number eight. Problem eight. Problem eight says find the length of find the length of LK. How we is it LK right yet? How are we gonna find the length of LK? What's the easiest way? Count spaces. Count spaces. Two. Two? Do I agree with that? Yeah. Could we have done it using the formula? Yeah. yeah, we could have. It's easier just to count on that one. Next one. Twelve. Twelve. Says find the length of LF. How long is segment LF? Fourteen. Does everybody agree with fourteen? No. Hold on, I want, I want to let Branson upset me again. He's going to tell me that the answer was wrong in that last one that we did. When, when he looked in, in the back of the book to get the answer and then didn't bother to even read the problem himself. And he screwed up because he probably looked at the wrong dang problem in the back of the book. So if you're going to cheat, Make sure you do it well. <laughs> so you don't look silly. Does everybody understand? Yeah. Yeah. Which question, Luke? Uh, 27. 27. 27 says, Denise traces the spiral shown in the figure. The spiral begins at the origin. What is the shortest distance between Denise's starting point and the ending point? Do we want to to do what to find the shortest distance there? Do we want to count all the stuff that she did? How would the shortest distance be? 
straight to it, right? So what's uh, one of the points is zero is zero. Uh, yeah, I got it. Okay, yeah. relax. I can hear. I didn't know what it was. What's the other one? Two to negative four. Two negative four. One second. What's my x's? Zero. Zero. And two. 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 So two zero. What's my y's? Negative four. So I'm probably going to do it this way because what can I do there? Plug that into your calculator. See what you come up with. Yes. Anybody get an answer yet? 20. 20? Anybody else get that? Yeah. Is that our answer? No. What do we still have to do? Take square root. Is it going to come out all nice and even like these others have? No. no. So what's this symbol mean again? Approximately about? Four point what? Four. Five, four, which one? Four. I don't know. What's this say on your calculator? It's four point four seven two. Oh, we should probably round that up to four point five. Shortest distance from that point to that point. Wow, well, I got that really <laughs> I don't know. Thirty four. Last one. They give us these two points. Four, four, five, eight. I'm not gonna write it up here. Just well, I will. You guys can do it. That's our skeleton of it. This four, x or y. This one. What's our x's? Four. Doesn't matter which order they go in, stick them in there. What's our y's? Eight minus four. Punch that into your calculator. Just give me the final answer this time. Simon's on, the, on your notes there. 4.12. 4.12, 4 4.1, somewhere around there. Anybody else get that? I got five. You got five? I don't know. Punch it in again. We got two different answers. So we can figure out which one's the correct. One. I got 4.1. 4.1. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. Is that right? 4.1. You haven't grabbed the notes up there, grab them. No, starting today and next class, we're starting to get in stuff. You guys want to keep sitting around like several of you doing here? That's go right in. Ever so just you can mess around and not focus. You're not going to understand it. I guarantee it. When you take a test over it next week, it'll show up. And maybe that'll help you knock some sense into you and decide, hey, I want to focus. fill in stuff. One of the things that I want you to fill in. Does everybody see this symbol here? Mm -hmm. Looks almost like a what? What kind of symbol? Array. 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 
But what's it missing? All right. It's missing half of it. That's called a vector. A vector. We're just going to call it a directed line segment. So it's just a line segment, and they're showing you a direction. So it's actually showing movement. Whenever you have a ray, or not a ray, whenever you have a vector, it gives you an initial point. That means the starting point. So if I'm looking at this, what's my initial point? Where am I beginning at? Q. Q. And the terminal endpoint. Now you got to be careful with this because terminal endpoint makes it sound like it does what? It dies, it stops or something. It, it doesn't actually stop. It's showing you direction. So it's going out that direction. But when we're dealing with a, a vector, we're sort of stopping it at B so that we can measure things. All right? So it's got a terminal endpoint. What's the terminal endpoint uh, in this one? R. R. So we're starting at that this point and going out through that other point. Uh, using a directed line segment allows you to find a point on uh, at some fractional distance from the initial point. Now we're sort of stopping it here, the terminal point, because we want to be able to measure. If we don't stop it there, then we can't measure stuff. So we're stopping it there. A lot of things in science and out in the real world, even though they may go on forever, we may consider them going on forever. We have to stop them somewhere so that we can put some kind of measurement with them. There's going to be several formulas that we're going to do here. These are the steps to use the formula. This final thing down here is our actual formula, but these are the steps that we're going to do. So fill those in. You're going to do three steps. If we're just on and I should probably write that up here. This is on a number line. On a number line, this is the process that we're going to use. you have a starting point and an ending point. So now, yes, it will matter which one is which. If we go back for one second, and I'll turn it back to this. So we're looking here. Where you start at is your x1. Where you end at, or where you're going through, or whatever, however you want to consider it, is your x2. So maybe we should write that down there. Maybe put that on here. X2 is the uh, terminal point, and X1 is the, what do we call it on the other one? Initial. Initial point, or starting point. So this is where you start, this is where you're ending. it's going to make a difference. You're going to have to make sure you don't turn it around. Otherwise, you're going to have it backwards. So in this, they're going to give you, we're going to do this example, they're going to give you a fraction I'm going to tell you uh, to find some point that's located somewhere on this segment. They're going to give you your how you're moving and stuff. Uh, distance from A to C. So we're starting where? A. A and we're going to C. So this is where we're starting. This is where we're ending. 
and we're just going to use that formula. Somebody help me out so I don't have to try to remember that formula. What did it say? X2. X1 plus A over B. X2 minus X1. So we're going to use that same thing every time. And you just got to figure out each of those things. They tell us the fraction. So in, the, in that fraction, that top number is A. The bottom number is the B. This time they just tell you it as a fraction. So all you got to do is have it put in there. What's x1 this time? Negative 5. Negative 5. Does everybody see that? That's where we're starting. What's x2 this time? 7. What is it? 0. 7. seven. That's where we're ending, right? Mm -hmm. And then what's a this time? 2. Yeah. 1. What's b this time? 4. You're just looking for those four things and we're going to plug them into that formula. And then if you plug them into this formula correctly, your calculator will probably do it all for you. And we'll figure that out here in a second. What's x1? Negative 5. Plus a over b is just what? One fourth. Parentheses, what's x2? 7. Minus negative. 5, what can we do with this minus and that negative? Plug all of that into your calculator just like it looks right there. You can use the ABC button for the 1 fourth. Or, if it's just 1 fourth, something that easy, you could change it to a decimal. What's 1 fourth as a decimal? 0.25. You could just punch that in if you don't want to use the ABC button. Riley said negative 2. Anybody agree with that? Yes. Yeah. Now, let's go back and let's think about this. What we're trying to do when we're doing this, and you got to know this for the entire stuff, everything that we do today. What we're trying to do is we're saying we're on this segment AC, and we want to find a point. If we're walking down this segment, we want to find a point somewhere out through here that's one fourth of the dis the total distance from A to C. So what I'm actually doing is I'm splitting this segment up into how many parts? Four. How many times would I have to cut it to split it up into four parts? Three times, right? So if I cut it, if I just do this, and my cuts might not be in the right spot, all right? I'm just estimating here. We're trying to find, it's, it's almost like this is you, this is your friend, and you're saying, all right, me and my friend are going to meet somewhere one-fourth of the distance from my house. So you're going to walk one-fourth of the distance, and your friend's going to walk what part? Three-fourths. You're not a very good friend, apparently. All right, because you're making them walk so much farther than you, but they must be a great friend because they're willing to meet you that far. So you're going to meet somewhere in here. Now, again, my markings, are my markings exact? No. no. Where did we figure out, what coordinate did we figure out that you're going to meet at? Negative two. Negative two. Also, that was pretty close. Because right there is where you're going to meet at. Negative two. That's all we're finding. So we're saying if we split up this segment, AC, this directed segment, and we decide we want to go one-fourth of the distance, we're going to stop right there at negative 2. That's what we're finding. This whole thing, Michael has never, ever, or I shouldn't say that. I'm guessing that Michael is never going to go out in the real world and do something like this. All right? But what Michael is going to do out in the real world, you see this formula? He's got to be able to use formulas and think things through logically and plug stuff in and be able to do the, the steps. 
All right, and that's what you've got to learn here. Find this one. We're going to do this one. What was the formula again? X1 this in on here you're going to punch in x1 plus then here you're just going to put three divided by five then the parentheses and it's going to do the same thing what's x1 this time negative five everybody agree with that let's see b no it's not it's negative one it's right there in negative one what's b nine nine Make sure we know our points here. So x1 is negative 1, x2 is 9. What's a this time? 3. Three. What's b this time? Five. Punch it all into your calculator. I'm going to put mine up here, just write it out. 3 over 5, parentheses, uh, 9 minus a negative 1. What's going to happen with the minus a negative 1? Change that to a plus. If you're not writing this stuff down on your paper as you're doing it, you're probably going to get lost and confused. Now, once you get it all written down that way, I don't care that you're showing all of your work. I want you to punch it into your calculator. If I get an answer yet, five. You got negative five. Anybody else get something different? If you got syntax error, this right here at the beginning here, what is that symbol? That's a negative. If you put a minus in its place, the calculator won't understand it. One second. All right. Yeah, you hit the uh, three first, then ABC, then the five. And then you can just do the first call about Yes. I told you. Okay, I wasn't sure. I thought you were going around. Yeah, I got five. Was it actually about my cheese? You got five. Is that what we're going with is five? Mm -hmm. So let's see. How many parts are we actually splitting our walk up into this time? Five. That bottom number tells you that. Yeah. Five. So how many times would I have to cut the walk? Four. Four times. So one, two, three, four. Again, now my marks aren't exact. Just throwing stuff on there. So now we have one, two, three, four, five parts. We want how many of those parts? We're going to walk how many of them? Three. One, two, three. So we're guessing that when we stop, we're going to be somewhere about there. Is that pretty close to five? Yeah. If my marks were a little better, probably would be exactly five, but my marks aren't very good. Five's right here. That's all we're looking for at that point. All, all you're doing is make sure that your answer makes sense. Negative 5 is right here. We start moving from B and going this direction. Is it going to make any sense whatsoever that we end up at negative 5? So you can tell there that we did something wrong. It, it can't be that. So our answer, we had to have messed up somewhere. 
all right? Should you be able to about tell what your answer is going to be every single time? Yeah. yeah. And here you can tell that, can your answer be negative 5? No, because this one was multiple choice and negative 5 is not on there anymore. Where do you think they got the 2 from? 2 probably went, instead of 3 out of the 5 parts, it probably went what? One out of the five parts. Three is right about here. It probably went, what? Two out of the five parts. And then six is out here. It went, maybe four out of the five parts. You're using this formula. And again, just make sure that your answer makes sense if you're on that number line. Did you still mess up? Yeah, I've been doing it over and over again trying to... I'll show you here in a second. Yeah. All right, so on this, biking, Julia's biking from uh, mm -hmm. Julia, Julio, sorry, not Julia this time. Julio is biking from his house <laughs> to the library. His house is eight blocks west of the school, and the library is four blocks east of the school. If he stops to rest one-third of the distance from his house to the library, at what point does he stop? So apparently this is his house, that's the school, that's the library. His house is where? What's the coordinate for his house? Negative eight. Negative eight it looks like. What's the coordinate for the school? Zero. Zero. And what's the coordinate for the library? Four. Four. So if we're using our formula again, what's x1? Negative eight. Negative eight. That's where he's starting at. That's the initial point. What's the stopping point? Four. Or I'm sorry, what, what, the ending point for our segment? Four. Four. And then what's A? One. One. That's the fraction right here, right? What's B? Three. Do I need to write the formula up here again, or can we just write it? What is it? You tell me X1. Plus one over three. Parentheses. What's x2? 4. 4 minus negative 8 again, right? Let's do that real quick. Yes, well, I will here in a second. Write this one down and we'll type it in first. What's going to happen with the 4 minus the negative 8? You can just do a plus there, right? Make sure once you get an answer, make sure it makes sense. If you got 17, is that going to make sense? No, that's way out here somewhere on the number line. Should be, it should fall in that range there somewhere, shouldn't it? Ready? You watching? Get all that? All right, so we're going to do negative eight and plus. Then you got your fraction, 1 over 3, so 1 divided by 3, parenthesis, 4, plus 8, close the parenthesis. You just hit 8. What did anybody come up with? Negative 4, 4, everybody agree with that? So let's look here. Negative 4 is going to fall somewhere about there. They said that he wants to go, if we're traveling this whole distance from H to L, he wants to go a third of that distance. Does it look like this is about where we came up with? Does it look like that's about a third of the way? Yeah. Yeah. We split it up into three parts. That means we've got to cut it twice. Somewhere around in here is where we should end up at. That's what we're finding. We're taking this directed line segment and finding a point that's a third of the distance, a fifth of the distance, three-fifths of the distance, whatever, on that line segment, using that formula. Cameron, we ready? Now we get to a little harder stuff. Sometimes they won't give you that distance as a fraction. And we're going to use a different formula then. 
and that's this formula right here. So fill in what you need to fill in on this. in my golf balls going out here and hitting in our yard our yards I mean, we might be able to get about 150 yards going into the woods and quit wasting my golf balls hitting them into the woods get, get the irons out and work on hitting those out here instead of every time hitting the driver just because you get frustrated with hitting the, your iron plus he doesn't know enough to know which iron to hit which one not to hit You can't measure that. Yeah, you yeah. can use it to measure this. We were playing north, and I had my phone up to see how far I was from the hole. And the kids like, "Can you measure that?" I'm like, "Well, my coach said otherwise, so I'm ready." All right, on this, if they give it to you a little different, if C has a coordinate of x1, so that's where we're starting at. Again, this is your starting point. X1 is where you're starting, or your initial point. D has a coordinate of X2. That's your terminal point, or your ending point. And you want uh, that a point P, that's where we're going to partition this at, where we're going to separate it off at, the line segment, and a ratio, this time we're given a ratio, instead of a fraction. So M compared to N. All right, in a ratio, if I give you a ratio, it looks like this. 3 colon 4. This is, it's sort of like a fraction, but what it's saying is I get three parts and you get four parts. So it's just separating it a little different. All right, instead of saying 3 out of 5, now we're saying three parts compared to four parts. So when we look at this, if we're splitting this up, we're saying, all right, I get four parts this time. You get two parts. That's what we're, we're looking at it just in a different way. Instead of giving the fraction, now we're dealing with a ratio. And what we're going to do is use this formula right here. You really don't have to worry about this because uh, everything that we do won't deal with that, but there are certain times that this will not work if you mess it up. 
So M is your first number. M would be the 3 here. N would be the 4. And we're just plugging into this formula. And this formula is going to be a little harder to punch into your calculator, and we'll do a couple of them. Uh, and I'm just going to write this down over here so that we have it. N times X1 plus M times X2 over M plus N. So again, the ratio, what we're doing, we're splitting this up. If we were going to split this up from this point to this point, and I don't know, somebody make up a ratio for me. Five to six. Five to six. So that means over here on this side, we want how many parts? Five. On this side, we want six parts. It's that simple. How many total parts are we splitting it up into? 11. Now here's where you gotta be careful. And you guys have done well with this so far. If you're splitting it up into 11 parts, how many times are we actually gonna cut it? 10. 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. My, again, my mark's horrible. They're not spaced out correctly. Everybody understands that, right? Tell me when to stop at the point that we're, we wanna be at this time. That's the point we want to be in. We want five parts on this side, six parts on that side. And again, my marks are terrible because this side over here actually looks longer than this side and it shouldn't. It should be the other way around. <laughs> so that's what you're doing. You're splitting it up that way. Find this example there in your notes. It says find the coordinates. Uh, the coordinate of B on segment AC such that uh, AB to BC is at a ratio of 3 to 4. So we want B to fall somewhere in here, and we're trying to figure out where. The formula is right here, and we just need to figure out each one of these. Remember that this is M, that's N. What's your x1 this time? What point are we starting at? Negative 5. Negative 5. What's your x2 this time? Which point are we ending at? 7. Seven. What's our m this time? 3. 3. What's our n this time? Three. Notice, Michael. Eversol just writes this stuff down because he loves writing. No. I write it down because it's a necessity. And that you should write it down also. Now we're going to plug into the formula. I got the formula written up here so I don't have to continue to do it. What's N? Four times what's X1? Negative five. Plus What's M? What's X2? Over, what's M? What's N? Now, once you have that written down, then we'll talk about it. Most of the time, these are going to be not real hard math. I would highly suggest, instead of grabbing your calculator and doing all of this at once, I would go ahead and do the bottom. What is the bottom this time? Seven. Seven. So let's write that down. Now what I would do is I would grab my calculator and I would type that top in just like it is right there. So type all that top in just like it is parentheses and all that. Everybody agree with one? Yes, no, maybe? No. Now, that's not what you got? I got, wait, I divided five. Don't divide or anything, just do the top. Sometimes I five negative 20. Is that right? Yep. Now, 
Usually, the next step we would do is to do what? What's this bar tell us? Divide. Divide. Usually, we would say 1 divided by 7. But 1 divided by 7, is that going to come out anything nice? No. 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 So just leave it that way. What is the coordinate of the point where we're going to stop at? It's point B. 1, 7. One seven. Now, the bad thing is we got to figure out where that 1, 7 is. Where is 1, 7 on this number line? Just barely what? Just barely past zero. So somewhere like right there. Just barely past zero. Does that look like three parts on this side and four parts on that side? Yeah, it looks like that could be sensible. This side over here should be a little shorter than that side, right? And it looks like it is. Is it all right to come up with some coordinate like 1, 7? Yeah, it sucks, but you've got to be big boy now, right? Mm -hmm. Wait, what does that do for you? What did you do with the 1, 7? Seven? 1, seventh is the point where we're stopping here. So if we want, if you get three parts of this segment, 1, 2, 3, and your friend gets four parts, 1, 2, 3, 4, that right there is where we'd split it up at. Okay. Right there at point B. That's what we found. That one set is the coordinate that we found. But did you just put it at zero and it also be the same? No, because it is. You put it at zero, we're back this way. Yeah, and then that one would still be bigger than that. Right. But you're cheating yourself out of a little bit. Right. And I guess if you're a nice friend and you don't mind, you give your friend extra and you, you get cheated, that's that's, that might be fun. For the math purposes, we want the actual answer. So let's try this one. What's our, uh, we're starting negative 15, what's our ending point? One. So what's X1? Negative 15. What's X2? One. M this time? One. One in three. three. Take the formula, write it out, and then once I get the formula written out, I'm going to let you do the work. Uh, let's see, n is three times negative fifteen plus uh, m is one times one divided by m plus n. I'll do the bottom for you. That's four. Figure out what the top is. <laughs> if I get the top, negative forty four, Michael said. Anybody agree with that? Now, what are we going to do? Divide, divide that. Divide it. Negative 11. It's <coughs> so, all right for our answer to be negative 11. Yes. What we're saying is point P, if we split this up at a 1 to 3 ratio, point P is going to be at negative 11. Tell me to stop when I get to negative 11. Stop. Right there? Is that it? So that's point P. So we're saying when we split this up, there's one part over here, and how many parts on the other side? Three parts on the other side. Fifty parts in one part? Yeah. So if you wanted, if you wanted it. 50 to 1. Our M here would be what? 50. Our N would be 1. And then in our formula, we still have, uh, or we have uh, our N is 1. So 1 times negative 15 plus our M is 50. 
times one over uh, 50 plus one, and that would be 51 on the bottom, and then on top, you get like 35, is that right? Now divide it, what's 35 divided by 51? Six, six, something, something. Is that right? Six, eight. Yeah, six, oh, eight, six, eight. eight. Right, so about 0.68. Tell me to stop when I get to the point that's 0.68. saying you have on this side you have how many parts? 50. On this side you have one part. So if you're a pig and you don't like sharing, you might take 50 parts. You might, I, did, I didn't say if you were a pig, I said if you were a pig. You take 50 parts and your friend takes that one little part. Uh, George is traveling 2,563 miles from New York City to San Francisco by car. He plans on stopping for gas uh, when the ratio of the distance he has traveled uh, to the distance he still has to travel is 2 to 5. Awful wordy for no more than it says, isn't it? So the ratio of 2 to 5. How far is, has George traveled when he stops for gas? First thing, where's George starting at? Here. So let's put an N here. What are we going to label that as far as numbers go on our number line? Zero. Zero. That's probably the easiest place to start, right? And he's going to where? San Francisco. We'll call that an S. What are we going to label it? 2,563. 2,563. Here I'm making fun of Branson all the time. He's, he's all over it. I appreciate that, Mike Branson. So we're going from here to here. Ratio of two to five. We're still using the same thing. It's not any harder than any of the other stuff, just bigger numbers. What's our X1 this time? Where are we starting at? Zero. What's our X2? 2,563. Don't make it harder just because the numbers are bigger. What's M this time? Two. What's in this time? Five. Five. So two fifths. We're trying to figure out he's going to stop somewhere two fifths of the distance in here. Two fifths should be two parts on this side compared to five parts on that side. So we shouldn't be very far out there. Maybe something like that, maybe. Just yeah. given the estimate. Now we're going to plug into the formula. N is five times X1 is zero. Well, that's hard to do. Plus uh, M is 2 times X2, which is 2,563, over M plus N, which is uh, 5 plus 2, which is just 7, right? If I do the top for me yet, 5,126, and what are we going to do with that? Divide it. So somebody divide it up for us. Even if it doesn't come out even, we'll get some idea. 732.3. Anybody else get that? Yeah. So if we were to actually number this, what number would we be at here? 732.3. In this case, that's telling us that he wants to drive how many miles before he stops? 732 miles before he stops. That's our answer. Which question do you think you just also, also multiply it by two fifths? Yeah, this time you could have because what? Because our starting point was what? Zero. 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 If our starting point wasn't zero, then it wouldn't work out. The assignments there. Page 49, make sure you get it.